Another favourite option of mine to go for would be a nice pug burger. They tend to be a little bit hairy and a little bit stinky, but pretty delicious if you barbecue them right. What's up YouTube and welcome to a high fat grocery haul. So in front of me I've got laid out some of my favourite foods that I've utilised to change my diet from a high carb low fat to a high fat lower carb. The reason I did that was I was struggling to eat all the food and calories that I needed and by having a higher fat diet and a lower carb you can actually get more calories in in smaller portions. So today we're going to look at some of my favourite food choices to keep things healthy and fun. So if you see what's laid out in front of me we've got everything from greens, breads, fruits, nuts, meats, and everything that you're going to need to keep things fun and fresh. So starting more on the meaty side of things, eggs. And you get to eat on a high fat diet the whole bloody thing. Everyone thinks egg whites are great for you. The reality is the yellow contains good cholesterol, good fats, and even more additional protein. So per egg you're looking at four grams of fat, and six grams of protein with basically like half a gram of carbohydrate. I tend to go for around three eggs per omelette or scrambled egg. Then you end up with a really good balance of around about 12 grams of fat, 18 grams of protein, one and a half carbohydrates. It stinks, but it's good for you. <laughs> Smoked salmon. Now this is the one that you want if you're on the high fat diet. If you get salmon fillets, you have to be careful because they can often be devoid of a lot of fat. Great for protein, but low in fats. But that's not always a bad thing, because if you want to volumize on this diet, you can go for a lower fat option, which obviously then gives you more in terms of volume. But for the higher fat side, smoked salmon per 100 grams is 10 fat and 23 protein with zippity doo dah carbs. Something a little more fun, red meat in the form of a burger. I personally would only eat red meat maybe once every three days or so, because it does have a long digestive time. And again, red meat in the gut on an overloaded form has been shown to give a lot of gut issues. Personal choice, but personally, once every three days. But when I do go for it, I go for something a little bit more fun. Now this is a muscle food burger here, but obviously you can make your own burgers using standardized lean mince or extra lean if you want to volumize, like I said before. But standard typical values per 100 for red meat, we're looking at around that nine to 10 grams of fat per 100 grams. Protein wise, you're looking around about maybe 18 to 23, depending on which type of meat you're getting. But again, don't be afraid of making things fun. Just because you make it into a burger doesn't make it something unhealthy. So you can go to your local butchers, get some ground lean red meats. It's a great source of fats, just don't overload on it. Next up, and you might not think it's a good one, but chicken. Now I know this is a prepackaged chicken, but chicken breast, you still wanna keep it in there. I know it's not got a lot of fat on it, but if you go for a roast chicken with the skin on, you're gonna boost the fat up to around about four or five grams per 100. But again, whilst we're on this diet, we need protein. So we still want to get it in there and we still want to be full. Protein is satiating and chicken is a great source of protein and it's readily available. Next up is a lazy man's choice and that is gonna be ham. Now you can get this from anywhere, but get the one that isn't full of preservatives and crap. And that means getting one that goes off relatively quickly. Sounds like it's not a good thing, but it is. Cause if it goes off fast, it means it's fresher. It means it's leaner. It means it's purer. Now. This is the lazy man choice for me because I like to get the ham, it comes in slices. It's like what you get from the butchers, but if it's sliced, it means you can throw it in with other food or you can use it on its own in dips, scoop, and eat. This one, 22 grams of protein per 100 and around about four grams of fat. You can get higher fat options and if you want that, you can do, but if you go for lower fats, it means you can volumize. So in terms of meats, obviously we've covered things, chicken, red meat, ham, and fish. Other things that you can look at here is oily fishes like sardines and mackerel. If you enjoy those, make sure you get those in. They're a good source of protein, high fat and low carb. But now let's move on to some other snacks. So moving on, I want to talk about these nuts. So obviously a variety of things on the market in terms of the nuts that you can choose from. Some little grazed pre-packet things are great for snacking on. Also, think about things that are honey-covered cashew nuts. These are great pre-workout because you're going to add some carbs and fats in, so a handy little snack. But overall, nuts are a great source of fats. You know, there's often ones on the market that you can find. If you don't like peanuts, you might like a pecan. If you don't like a pecan, you might like a walnut. There's a shitload of them to choose from. Make sure, though, that you go to smaller places to buy your nuts from. Try to avoid buying from the supermarkets and get them more from marketplaces. You're going to get much better value for money. So my favorites are cashews almonds and also pine nuts. Pine nuts are great for throwing in with salads. On average nuts tends to be about 50% fat, 30% carbohydrate and 20% protein. So when that tells you that nuts are a great source of protein as that being the thing, they're talking cac. It's fats and carbs. One you might not have thought of, chia seeds. Nice and healthy for you. 40% fat, carbohydrates they're very low so that's a benefit only around about five grams per hundred carbohydrates and 
Protein, 20 per 100. And you can just use them as a topper, yogurts, salads, maybe even on, maybe breaded chicken, things like that. Add them on there, I don't know, have a try. And healthy fats, one of those choices that everybody should know by now, and that is avocados. Again, I would say try and get these from your green grocers or from marketplaces rather than supermarkets because they're probably gonna be better value for money. Can't see what they are on this. The fuck? There's no nutritional value on it. Per 100 grams, you're getting around about 16 grams of fat and eight grams of carb. So again, it's more fat than anything, but you do have to take into account a little bit of carbs in there. Uses for avocado, again, you can have them alongside your eggs. You can actually blitz these into shakes as well, and they'll just make it taste a little bit creamier because they've not got a crazily strong taste, so they're not going to ruin it. Same with if you want to add micronutrients into shakes, you can also blend in spinach there. But in terms of getting the fats in, avocado's your boy. Next up, we'll have a look at some of the dairy. First off, Butter, proper butter. Now, butter has been shown to be anti-carcinogenic and good for you in a number of other ways, so don't be afraid of utilizing this. Adding in like a little knob, <laughs> knob, into your eggs will make them taste great. 10 grams in there, you're looking at around about 80% fat. So for every 10 grams that you use of this, you're gonna get eight grams of fat, which is a really nice way of adding flavor and also adding some decent source of fats. Cheese grommet. My favorites, goat's cheese, super flavorsome. You don't have to add a ton of this to food to make it taste great. It goes well alongside meats in salads. Add this along with pine nuts, balsamic vinegar on a salad, beautiful. 24 grams of fat per 100, negligible carbs, and a decent kick of 18 grams of protein. That tends to be around about the thing. Most cheeses are about 30, 35% fat. Other favorite, brie, inoffensive, makes things taste really creamy. But again, don't rely on these as being your main source of fat. Outside of dairy, but something you might not think of, a chickpea-based treat, hummus. I love this. Add this alongside low-carb celery option. You can use that to dip it in the hummus, or like I said before, the lazy man's treat, ham. Per 100 grams, you're looking at 24 grams of fat, 11 grams of carb, a little bump of protein of six grams. It's more fat than it is anything else, but it's from a chickpea base. Again, you can make this at home yourselves using some chickpeas, lemon, um, what's the other thing they add in there? Ah, that Pass. ready powdery thingy me jiggy. Pre workout. <laughs> <laughs> oh, paprika! Yeah, that one. So, very easy to make at home yourself. Obviously, you can buy it pre packaged. This is another one that you can add alongside your meats, add it alongside salads, and another great snack choice. One that everybody knows and loves. Peanut butter. Now this isn't the best choice. This isn't an organic super. We've taken this from a nut, kissed everyone and given it a little bit of ground and put it in a pot. No, this is one that is a smooth peanut butter and it has palm oil in there. This is why we don't want this to be a major part of our fat sauce, but it doesn't mean that you can't use it. Not every fat that you have in your diet has to be perfect. So make sure to have a little bit of fun. Smooth peanut butter, I'll have about 50 grams of this a day and that will provide me with around about 25 grams of fat because it's 50% of fat. You do have to remember again, it's a nut-based thing, so there is carbs to think about. Per 100 grams, 13, and a protein bump, 25% protein. So from every 50 grams, I'm getting 12 protein. So you can use this on toast, like I like to do with some reduced sugar jams, which we'll get to in a little bit, or you can have it on some low carb bread options, which again, we'll get to in a little bit. So moving on to the better option of where to get to your fats from, starting with coconut oil. Now, this is a great one to have in your toolkit, your weapon kit, your cupboard, because this contains MCTs, which are medium chain triglycerides. That's a type of fat that doesn't require the same digestive process. It goes straight into your system and is utilizable as an energy source. So, like me, I like to add this into my coffee. If you wanna see how to do that, make sure to check out my full day of eating on this high fat diet. Meal for meal, link will be in the description. But you can also cook with it, so that means you can give your chicken a nice little coconutty taste but very, very versatile. Along those same lines, we have olive oil. Another great tool, healthy, extra virgin if you can do, but this is one for cooking in. You can also throw it into shakes, put drizzle on salads. Now these are a great way of getting a lot of fat in in a small content because the coconut oil, 100% pure fat. You add 20 grams, that's 20 grams of fat. The olive oil, 91%. So you add 10 grams, you're getting nine grams of fat. So very versatile, only needs a small amount, so you're getting a lot of calories in a very small portion. Now, as long as 80% of your diet is pretty healthy, full of micronutrients, don't forget you can have a little bit of fun in there. And that means chocolate. That's right, chocolate, but not any old chocolate. This is the high cocoa dark chocolate. The great thing about this is, per square of these, you end up with about four grams of fat. 
But if it has a high cocoa content, so 70% or above, it actually has shown to have anti-fatigue benefits. So if you have a square of dark chocolate before your training, it's gonna benefit you, plus it tastes bloody good. If you don't wanna have it before your training and you've got five grams of fat to spare, trust me, dipping one of those squares in a little bit of coffee, Oh, great way to get your fats in. Now a perfect one, like I told you before, the honey covered cashew nuts were a good one. Nice little bit of a natural way to get some of those carbs in. If you wanna go more down the fun route, Pop Tarts. That's right, a single pastry of these, 35 grams of carb, but also around about eight or nine grams of fat. So yeah, not a lot of fat, but still a high fat for a little treat, but perfect for pre-workout because it's quick, fast acting carbs, plus boosting those little bit of fats, which is gonna help with that vascularity and it tastes good. I wouldn't have one every day, but every so often, why not? As I said before, on a high fat diet, you can get more calories in in smaller volumes, which is great if you struggle to eat a lot of the time. But if you're hungry and you want to volumize, you're gonna need some lower carb options so that you're able to keep the micronutrients there, keep yourself full, and we're gonna start with fruits. Now I know what you're thinking, fruit is not high fat. What are you on about, Lex? Exactly, but what it is, is lower carb, if you pick the right fruits. Now berries are your option to go for. They tend to be between five and seven grams of carbohydrates per 100 grams. We want to stay healthy on this diet and that means keeping in the micronutrients. So we're looking at keeping in fruit and veg. Avoid things like bananas, which tend to be 20 grams of carbohydrate per 100 and go for more things like raspberries and berries, strawberries, because they tend to be the lower carb, which means you're able to get these in in decent portions without going over your numbers on your carbs, but you're keeping those micronutrients high. Another way of getting fruits in, in a fun way, Jam. But obviously you can't get normal jam because it's loaded with sugar. But on the market you should find these reduced sugar jams or no added sugar jams. And they literally halve the carbohydrate level of a normal jam. So you put your peanut butter on your toast with 10 grams of your sugar reduced jam that only now has like four or five grams of carb in it. You've got a tasty treat that should be loaded with carbs, but it isn't. Jam. Now if you're like me and you like wrapping stuff in bread or you like sandwiches or manwiches, but Obviously, bread is a high impact source for carbohydrates, so often it's a waste. Options here, Joseph's, Lavash's, and breads and things like this that are made from flaxseed and high fiber. Each one of these, which is bigger than my entire head, not far off my entire torso, man bib, <laughs> eight grams of carbohydrates in an entire wrap. That is crazy, and the best part of it is, it's not a weird thing that like tastes odd or feels weird. It genuinely tastes and feels like a normal tortilla wrap. And they do these pitters, this per pitter, seven grams per pitter in this, eight grams per huge bloody big thing in this. These are a great option to be able to wrap your meats and get some tasty burrito-y style treats or pitter dips, or, you know what I'm saying, bread. And if you're like me and love yogurts, you think, bugger me, I can't have yogurts on a high fat, low carb diet. Yes, you can. Not only can you have them, but they're gonna be a good protein source. Kvarg and Skir. <laughs> Remix, Garcy, <Quarksy>, Garcy. <laughs> These are around about 18 to 20 grams of protein per pot. They're only around four or five grams of carbohydrates and fats, they're low in fat as well. But this is the point. It's a protein kick that's a low fat, low carb, great snack option to add in there as a dessert or just a cheeky treat. Now, if you like me and you love your coffees, this is fantastic. Almond drink, this is zero carb, all fats. Add this into your coffees, it makes a really nice flavor. You can also get soy and you can also get oat milk. They're all good options for you to be able to keep enjoying your coffees every day without adding the carbs that milk would add. Plus, sucrin. Now this is almost, looks like sugar, tastes like sugar, almost even feels like sugar, but it is a natural sweetener that you can utilize that doesn't have that weird aftertaste that many of them on the market do. Now we do have a link for this one for you. It'll be in the description below because it can be a little bit awkward to find, but you hit that link, it'll take you straight through. One spoon of this is equivalent to a spoon of sugar, but zero carbs. Now just because you're on a high fat diet doesn't mean that you shouldn't be getting in your greens. Vegetables, spinach, celery, they're all great because they're low carb, they're low fat, but they're high in micronutrients. So you can pack out your meals, you can volumize, Salads, rock it, add some balsamic vinegar, add some of the goat's cheese, use the celery to dip into hummus. You know what I'm saying, keep your veg in there. You've been able to keep your fruit in like I've shown you, take your low carb options of fruit. There's no reason you cannot stay healthy on a high fat diet. So keep your micros, keep your greens, and stay healthy. That should suit all those people that are like, high fat diets are all bad for you. What you want when you're doing things that are low carb is something that gives you a lot of flavor, a lot of impact in your meals, but doesn't smash those carb macros. Things like pickles. 
pickled onions, all stuff like that is great. They have a very low impact, they're very low carb. You're looking per 100 grams, carbohydrate 12, but you're not gonna use 100 grams of these. Each pickle's probably gonna weigh around about 15 grams, 10, 15 grams, so you're looking at like one or two carbs per pickle. But you slice one of those up, throw them in a salad, throw them on your burger, throw them in the meats. They're gonna add a punch of flavor, but not take up a lot of your macros. And that's it, I think that's everything for now. I mean, it's pretty much a good scope on how you can switch from one to the other. There's some of my favorite ideas in there to be able to take you to a higher fat diet, keeping things healthy, keeping them balanced, and keeping them enjoyable, because that's what it's about. Remember, all of this crap, diets, training, everything, goes around your life. Your life doesn't go around the diet. Keeping the balance means keeping consistency, and consistency over time means gains. So there you go, I hope you've enjoyed that. If there's anything else you'd like to see alongside this high fat diet, there will be more full days of eating coming. If you haven't already seen the full day of eating, it'll be linked below, but just check back through the channel. Make sure you hit the notification bell. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. It really does help the channel. But I hope it's shown you that you can be summer body ready, but enjoying a high fat diet. There is no need for you to be eating chicken and broccoli and hating your life to try and look a certain way. I've been Lex. This has been my high fat grocery haul. I'll catch you in the next video. So until then, I'll give you a boom baby, we're out.